turning the spotlight directly on to agriculture. National Ag Week brings focus to the family farm and the food on your plate. And the clock is ticking to come to some sort of agreement on property taxes, patching up after a court battle and providing new markets for farmers, a co-op looking to a bright future and shining a light on solar power in ag operations. Check out the largest solar array in the state and see what it powers up. Get ready for NTV's Grow. We are celebrating National Ag Week in a moment, but first though, here's some news. OSHA is going to investigate a death that happened at a local elevator. According to the Adams County Sheriff's Department, 41-year-old Jason Weston died when he got caught by an operating auger. The injuries received then led to his death. Weston, a Kearney native, was at CPI's Hayland Elevator near Prosser. OSHA said CPI's grain handling facilities have been cited a dozen times in the past and says accidents like this are preventable. In a statement, CPI said the events leading up to the accident are unclear. Both OSHA and CPI CPI have sent along their condolences to Weston's family. Farmland values are on the decline. The average value of Nebraska's ag land dropped about 4% over the last year. That's the second drop in as many years. UNL survey reports show the drop comes as producers face lower prices for crops and livestock. Rental rates for dry land and irrigated cropland dropped 5 to 10% across the state. Those who responded to the survey include real estate salespeople, brokers, appraisers, bankers, and mortgage experts. Farm Farmers are pressing lawmakers to act on taxes. Farm Bureau President Steve Nelson said doing nothing is not an option. Farmers rallied at the Capitol this week. We are nearing the end of the legislative session and Governor Ricketts continues to say this is the state's top priority. Uh, I agree with the governor that property tax is the number one issue and, and he's certainly right when he says that, that everywhere you go in the state of Nebraska people want to talk about property tax. It's their number one issue and number one concern and we really do need to deal with that. Farm Bureau supports several bills, including new limits on local government spending, plus a measure that would limit the taxable value of farmland. They also support the cigarette tax that would fund property tax relief. Meanwhile, lawmakers are getting closer to that tax plan. The Revenue Committee voted to put more money into property tax credits. It's a compromise with the governor. Farm and ranch landowners would receive larger credit if the measures passed, offsetting some of the local property taxes. The legislation would also impose new budget restrictions on community colleges, which rely partially on property taxes. Governor Ricketts released a statement saying, quote, continued collaboration will be important as we work together to deliver much needed property tax relief for hardworking Nebraskans, end quote. It's more than the food we eat and the fuel for our cars. Nebraska's ag economy contributes over $25 billion to the economy. NTV's Steve White has more on how the governor kicked off Ag Week. We've got the most productive farmers and ranchers in the world right here. Feeding a growing world may also be key to growing Nebraska. It's the heart and soul of what we do. It drives our economy. One in four jobs are related to agriculture. And as Governor Ricketts celebrated National Agriculture Week with farmers like Ron Pavelka. Here in Nebraska, we really think we've, we've got it all. They point to jobs off the farm that support agriculture. So if you're looking here in Hastings, what AGP is doing by investing in their soybean plant here or Gavilon in their grain handling facility, those all create jobs and opportunities for young people to be able to get into the industry. Crop prices remain low, yet many remain bullish about the future. And that's why we're investing over $100 million in this expansion project and adding 20 jobs uh, to the local economy just for that reason because agriculture is so important. Farmer-owned AGP is just one company shipping Nebraska-grown products around the world and bringing the dollars back home. In this case, soybean meal headed to port in Washington on its way to Asian markets. That's doing nothing but add value to our local uh, 
local member co-ops and our local member farmers uh, bottom line. Ron Pavelka of Glenville says he raises soybeans, corn, cattle and kids and says Nebraska farmers can be proud of what they do. We reach the entire world right here from Hastings, Nebraska. Celebrating Ag Day every day. That's what's going on at Raising Nebraska. In Grand Island, you can check out the educational facility, providing explanations to what agriculture professionals do every day. Touch, move, interact with many different sectors of Nebraska agriculture. It's open year-round at the state fairgrounds. Nebraska voters could be asked to put the right to farm in the state's constitution. Here's NTV's Grows Steve White with more on this. Agriculture is the undisputed economic engine of our state. As Nebraska's population becomes more urban, Senator John Keene says farmers and ranchers face threats to their way of life. Now that, that rural senators and agriculture has lost that majority in our body, um, I think that the threat of that outside money and that kind of activist legislation, even incremental and small, is greater now than ever. Governor Pete Ricketts agrees, showing support for the right to farm. I think it'll help create the opportunity for us to protect our farmers and ranchers from outside groups like HSUS or any other, any other extremists who want to come in and overregulate agriculture. Keen, a cattle producer and veterinarian, says it's not only about livestock. He says the greater threat could be policies that restrict crop technology. Whether you, you choose to use a, a small organic farm or a larger farm with more biotechnology, protecting your right to make those choices as a property right is, is critical. If the legislature approves, it would go on the November ballot. Farm Bureau argues the more pressing issue is property taxes. Farmers Union, on the other hand, says it would promote corporate agriculture at the expense of family farms. Senator Keene says reports of animal rights activists flying over the Meat Animal Research Center in his district has given him a sense of urgency, saying the threat is real. And he says the answer is constitutional protection. Uh, ensuring that uh, our number one ish industry is protected both now and well into the future. Another way to protecting that future is educating students about what farmers and ranchers really do. And TV's Melissa Newman has more about how it's all about the beef. <laughs> What's got these kids so excited to eat lunch? Nebraska beef, of course. We want to uh, let kids know that, hey, we raise a good health and product here on our home ranches and stuff. Uh, you know, we live, you know, 30 minutes away from Lexington, where a good majority of beef in this area goes to be processed. So Dawson County Ag Groups got together to help get 1,300 pounds of beef donated to Dawson County students in hopes of showing them the importance of agriculture in the area and debunking some misconceptions. I think the major thing they think is that beef just comes from the grocery store and you just go get it and you don't, why do farmers do what they do? Because you just go to the grocery store and get it. But that's not true. Farmers are the ones who are putting the food in the grocery stores. And Dawson County puts a lot of beef into the stores. The latest census from the Department of Agriculture showed that calves and cattle in Dawson County have made over $520 million. We, are, we do it in a real humane way. We, we try and keep our animals healthy. We're trying to be, the new term, sustainable. We, we think we uh, have to be efficient in order to stay uh, viable in, in this industry. Thanks to this major donation, Dawson County Ag Groups will most likely have tons of students asking their parents to buy them Nebraska beef. We just want the, uh, the, everyone to have a choice to, to eat beef if it's available. It's much more than just your local grain elevator as you drive by. They provide fuel, they provide feed at these co-ops. And NTV's Steve White has more about how some of them are even looking for new opportunities for farmers to market in uncertain times. Here's a look at Aurora Co-op. From their combines, Nebraska farmers can see the world. It could end up over in China, Korea, South, South Pacific, or end up right in a local feed yard. And the farmers who own Aurora Cooperative say that's the beauty of the co-op model. They work together to find new opportunities for the grain they grow. Our job is to uh, hit the world markets, create as many markets as we absolutely possibly can for our owners. The excitement of record prices is behind us, these farmers say. They focused on boosting yields and being more efficient with an expanded yearly get-together. It's nice to emphasize uh, 
uh, our annual meeting here, maybe a little more so than we have in the past. One highlight, their legal beef with an ethanol plant has come to an end. Aventine went idle and when it restarted, did so without corn from the co-op next door. Now it's been purchased by Pacific Ethanol and has again become a good customer for Aurora Co-op and its farmers. And we're really enjoying a very nice relationship with them and there's a lot of good things to come yet. It's a nice partnership we have with those guys. It's been a year of transition following the passing of the co-op's longtime CEO. Plus with low corn prices, there are challenges, but leaders of this farmer owned company say they're still poised for success. One thing that you uh, won't ever do is you won't ever beat the American farmer. He's all going to find a way to innovate and a way to make this work. And a voice many farmers may recognize is heading to the Hall of Fame. Dave Thorell of KRVN will be inducted into Nebraska Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame. Thorell got his start at Kearney State College before hitting the airwaves at Holdridge KUVR. Thorell's been at KRVN since 1974. We talk policy after the break and then later on check out sun powered production and how it is the largest solar array in the state powering those fields. We'll be back. Hello, this is Kelly Bronkhorst with the Nebraska Corn Board and during this Ag Week we want to thank especially Nebraska's corn producers across the state that really fuel the economy producing corn for various uses including food, fuel and fiber. Appreciate everything you guys do.